Big news buzzing around. Something huge is happening in Jerusalem. There has been talk about building the Third Temple, a super important spot for many folks. But hold on, there's a twist. A battle's heating up over the Temple Mount, and scientists found something mind-blowing. So when will this temple be built? And why does it matter to the world? Stick around as we dive into this video to uncover the details today. Back in 1969, something shocking happened. A Christian tourist named Dennis Michael Rohan from Australia set fire to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, a really important place for Muslims. Why would someone do such a thing to a sacred spot? It all ties back to the idea of building the Third Temple in Israel. This concept has been talked about for centuries, causing discussions and conflicts between Christians and Muslims. The Third Temple is a big deal, especially for the Jews. If it gets built, it would be their holiest place. But its significance goes even further. According to various prophecies, some believe that building this temple holds the key to the end of an era. People have been waiting for this for a long time, and they're still eager to see when it becomes a reality. The building of the Third Temple is more than just constructing a place. It's connected to the idea that if the Messiah is to come, the Third Temple must be built. The Third Temple. The Third Temple is a concept about rebuilding a sacred place in Jerusalem. This hypothetical temple would follow Solomon's and the Second Temple, both destroyed in historical events. Though not yet built, the idea and longing for the Third Temple are highly sacred in Judaism, especially in Orthodox Judaism. It's seen as the holiest place for Jewish worship, and the Hebrew Bible suggests its construction before or during the Messianic Age. The building of the Third Temple also holds importance in certain Christian beliefs about the end times, eschatology. It's considered a key element in future events. Among religious Jews, the anticipation of building the Third Temple at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem is a significant idea. Significance of Third Temple The idea of a Third Temple in Jerusalem is rooted in the belief that a new temple will stand there one day. Different religious views exist about its significance and when it might happen. For some, it's a crucial part of the Messianic era, while others may see it differently. This concept is tied to eschatology and varies among Jewish denominations and traditions. Temples are considered the dwelling place of God in Jewish tradition. The first and second temples were central to Jewish religious practices, symbolizing a direct connection between the Jewish people and God. Temples represent the spiritual and cultural heart of Judaism, reflecting the Jewish connection to the land of Israel. The Second Temple in Jerusalem was a complex structure with specific areas serving distinct religious purposes. The innermost chamber, the Holy of Holies, housed the Ark of the Covenant, a sacred chest holding the Ten Commandments. The high priest entered this chamber once a year for a special ritual. The holy place contained ritual items like the golden altar of incense, the table of showbread, and the seven-branched menorah. The Courtyard and Rituals the temple complex had a courtyard where various rituals, including animal sacrifices, occurred. The altar of burnt offerings was used for these sacrifices. Surrounding the temple were rooms for storage and various necessities for temple service. The first temple, Solomon's Temple, was built in the 10th century BCE on Mount Moriah. Destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BCE, it served as the central place of worship for the Israelites and housed the Ark of the Covenant. After the Babylonian exile, the construction of the Second Temple began in 538 BCE, and it was later expanded by King Herod the Great in 19 BCE. This renovated temple, sometimes called Herod's Temple, served as a central religious and cultural institution for the Jewish people until its destruction by the Romans in 70 CE. Since the destruction of the First and Second Temples, there has been a void in Israel. Despite the significance of a temple in Israel, the anticipation of a third temple has not led to swift construction. The complex nature of the topic, with various interpretations and beliefs, has contributed to the ongoing discussions and differing views surrounding the rebuilding of the third temple. And then there is an important thing, the temple location. The excitement about rebuilding the third temple got higher with the update on its location which is closely linked to the city of David, a name found in many parts of the Bible, like 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 9. In history and archaeology, the city of David is a crucial place in Israel, revealing secrets from the past through careful digging. 
In the pages of 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 9, the mention of the city of David becomes like a guiding light, leading researchers to explore its historical and archaeological importance. The phrase, David built all around, is like a mysterious door, encouraging people to dig deeper and discover hidden stories. Recent discoveries have uncovered remains of five connected cities with ancient roads dating back to around 1000 BC, the time of King David. The similarity in design and detail suggests a well-organized kingdom, possibly led by a central stronghold linked to King David. There are debates about where the original temple might have been. Some suggest a new theory, proposing a cave as a potential site, challenging the commonly accepted location. This adds a fresh twist to the discussion about where King Solomon's original temple might have stood. But many obstacles are happening in the reconstruction of the third temple. Even with the location, it seems the obstacles are usually due to some clash of historical tales and faiths. The saga of Jerusalem's Temple Mount involves a series of historical events, religious transitions, and conflicting claims. The central focus lies on the elusive construction of the Third Temple, with the backdrop of the First and Second Temple's rise and fall. Understanding this complex narrative requires a detailed exploration of the intertwined history and faiths. Let's start with the cycle of destruction and rebirth. The historical account of Jerusalem reveals a recurring pattern, the destruction of the temple followed by a swift replacement. Notably, Jerusalem underwent a transformation after the Roman conquest in 70 CE and the subsequent obliteration of the second temple. The Romans renamed the city Aelia Capitolina, establishing a Roman colony. Recovering from such disruptions demanded resilience, and Jerusalem faced challenges to return to normalcy. And then there comes Islam's emergence on the Temple Mount. After the Second Temple's demise, a new chapter unfolded on the Temple Mount with the advent of Islam. The introduction of Islam on this sacred ground, propelled by the night journey of the Prophet Muhammad, brought profound changes. The Temple Mount became the third holiest site for Muslims globally, following Mecca and Medina. Two monumental structures, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, emerged, becoming integral to both religious and historical identity. Isra and Mirage, the night journey known as Isra and Mirage in Islam, holds deep spiritual and theological significance. This miraculous journey occurred in a single night, saw Prophet Muhammad was transported from the Kaaba in Mecca to the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The Isra phase involved leading prayers, while the mirage included an ascension through the seven heavens, culminating in a direct encounter with God. This journey became a testament to Muhammad's prophethood and emphasized the importance of prayer in Islam. Then there are the Al-Aqsa Mosque and Dome of the Rock, the architectural marvels and spiritual icons. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, constructed in the 7th century CE, reflects a simple yet elegant Islamic architectural style. With arcades, prayer halls, and domes, it stands as one of the holiest sites in Islam, often referred to as the farthest mosque. Meanwhile, the Dome of the Rock, intertwined with the night journey, defines the close relationship between the divine and the prophet. Both structures have undergone numerous renovations and expansions over centuries to preserve their spiritual and historical significance. Here, a contentious issue arises as some believe that the structures, Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, sit on the foundation of their previous temples. The Jews claim that Muslims intentionally erase evidence of the last Jewish temples to solidify control over the Temple Mount. This dispute adds a layer of complexity to the ongoing dialogue surrounding the construction of the Third Temple. Some say the Dome of the Rock, an important Islamic structure, must no longer be there to rebuild the Third Temple. Some suggest having both a Jewish temple and the Dome coexist, while others insist on removing the Dome. The debate over the temple's location involves deep discussions about history, religion, and politics. It raises questions about whether the Dome of the Rock should be replaced by the temple. This complex decision depends on religious beliefs archaeological findings and political situations. With that, some archaeological discoveries at the Temple Place also took place. Recent developments have brought scientists and archaeologists into the ongoing saga of Jerusalem's Temple Mount. 
Despite opposition, Jewish archaeologists have unearthed compelling evidence of the previous temples, reshaping our understanding of this historically charged site. It's the discovery of the Pool of Siloam. In 2004, while working on a construction project to repair a water pipe south of Jerusalem's old city, workers discovered the Pool of Siloam. This ancient pool, mentioned in the New Testament's Gospel of John, holds significance as the site of a miracle performed by Jesus. According to the Bible, Jesus healed a blind man by instructing him to wash in the Pool of Siloam. Also, the excavation revealed a large, stepped pool with two stairs leading down into the water. This finding provided valuable insights into the city's ancient water supply system. Moreover, inscriptions and pottery fragments around the pool dated to the Second Temple period, confirming its historical authenticity from around the 1st century CE. The Pool of Siloam has undergone archaeological excavation and subsequent restoration, making it accessible to visitors. The Biblical Connection of the Pool of Siloam the discovery of the Pool of Siloam contributes not only to archaeological knowledge, but also validates Jerusalem's historical and biblical context. This pool was crucial in temple worship during the Second Temple period. While not part of the temple complex itself, it played a significant role in rituals and aspects of worship. Further, the Pool of Siloam was utilized for ceremonial and ritual purposes, especially during the annual Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. During this festival, water from the pool was drawn in a golden vessel and carried to the temple as part of the water libation ceremony. This symbolic pouring of water at the altar represented God's provision of water during the Israelites' wilderness wanderings. Some religious teachings say that redoing the temple festival and making a new third temple are signs that the Savior is coming and the world might be ending. Recently, this big event happened in Jerusalem, hinting that the Third Temple building might be starting. But it's not just about repeating history. It's a strong sign of faith and keeping things going. It's like bringing back old traditions from when the temple was around, linking what happened back then to what's happening now, and giving hope for what's ahead. The main part of this repeat is not just about constructing a new building. It's about bringing back something spiritual and cultural. The water ceremony is a big deal in this, where they ask for blessings and connect with something bigger than themselves. Doing this is like saying things will improve and the future will be good and united. After the water libation ceremony, several events occurred the next day. It's important to know that this ceremony doesn't happen just once. It occurs every morning during Sukkot. To make it happen, priests get fresh water from the Shiloh Spring daily, so there's always enough for the special service. The religious things during Sukkot kept going with more offerings called Musaf offerings. They also say special psalms called Hallel that are full of praise, and there's a march around the altar where priests carry specific plants mentioned in Leviticus 2340. These rituals show how deep and together the festival is. For Jewish people, water is connected to being saved and has a deep meaning. A prophet named Isaiah said something beautiful about it. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In simpler words, water in Jewish thoughts means life, getting clean, and getting blessings from God. In the water libation ceremony, pouring water on the altar is a big way to thank God for giving us water, which keeps us alive. It's like a strong prayer asking for more blessings. Also, it shows how God's Spirit is pouring out, like it says in the Bible, in places like Isaiah 44.3 and Joel 2.28. 29. And more recently, on October 12th, this special ancient water ceremony was reenacted in Jerusalem. Priests and musicians led the ceremony, going from Shahar Hashpot to Shylock, Siloam Springs, an important historical place. At each stop, people sang, danced, and played silver trumpets following the lead of respected rabbis. When they reached Shylock, they collected water in a golden jug and took it back to the mountaintop. They set up a model altar with leafy branches, just like in the old temple days. The ceremony ended with blessings and something called hakal, which happens every seven years and is a special event. Even though the Torah doesn't say they have to do the water libation, it's a happy tradition that everyone celebrates. It used to last 15 hours in the temple and go on all night. People worldwide came to join the Sukkot celebrations, turning it into a big day of worship. For the last six days of Sukkot, they did the water libation and poured wine, 
keeping the temple traditions alive. So, while not frequently mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, the Pool of Siloam gained significance in temple worship. Ritual purification was crucial, and people would immerse themselves in the pool before entering the temple. This practice ensured ritual purity, a prerequisite for participation in various temple activities. The association of the Pool of Siloam with the biblical account of Jesus' miracle adds to its significance for Christian traditions. The pool served as a water source for the city of Jerusalem, vital for daily life and various ritual needs, including those related to temple worship. Its historical and religious importance during the Second Temple period underscores its role in the context of Jewish worship in ancient Israel. What do the prophecies say? Now let's explore what prophecies say about the Third Temple. It's clear that building the Third Temple isn't just a physical need rooted in Jewish tradition. It holds deep spiritual significance, outweighing all other reasons. In Jewish theology, Shekinah is crucial when discussing the Third Temple. Shekinah refers to the divine presence or dwelling of God. The word comes from the Hebrew verb shakan, meaning to dwell or reside. For Jews, Shekinah represents the divine glory or radiance of God. It's not just a concept, it's vital in Jewish spirituality and worship. The concept of Shekinah signifies God's closeness to His people. In Jewish traditions, there are rituals and practices designed to invite or experience the presence of Shekinah during prayer or worship. Lighting Sabbath candles, reciting prayers, or studying the Torah are some ways to connect with Shekinah. It's not something to attain but is acknowledged and experienced through faith and devotion. Unfortunately, according to Jewish beliefs, the full experience of Shekinah cannot happen without the Third Temple being built. Shekinah serves as a reminder of God's proximity during moments of divine revelation, guidance, and protection. In the Jewish tradition, all these experiences are tied to the presence of Shekinah, and without the Third Temple, they remain incomplete. Delving into the spiritual significance of building the Third Temple, prophecies play a crucial role. It's not just about fulfilling immediate worship needs, it's also about what must come according to these prophecies. According to the beliefs, the Messiah, a significant figure in Jewish tradition, will only come after the Third Temple is built. A series of events within it must occur before the Messiah arrives, making the construction of the Third Temple a significant milestone in fulfilling prophecies. The Messiah's role and the intricacies of prophecy. Now, who the Messiah is and what the Jews believe will happen when he comes. In Judaism, the Messiah, known as Mashiach in Hebrew, is a future leader from the family of King David. His mission is to bring ultimate redemption to the Jewish people, establishing a time of peace and prosperity by gathering Jewish communities worldwide. Well, the Messiah isn't exclusive to Jews. Christians also anticipate the Messiah known to them as Jesus Christ. However, Christians await His second coming, believing He already came once. This shared anticipation adds layers of significance to the prophecies, creating a bridge between two major faiths. The prophecies regarding the Third Temple don't end with its construction. There's an intriguing element called the Abomination of Desolation. In the books of Matthew 24, 15, and Mark 13, 14, Jesus talks about this event in the context of end times prophecies. He warns of a future abomination of desolation, a sign of imminent destruction and judgment. This prophecy raises questions about its interpretation and its connection to the Third Temple. Interpreting the abomination of desolation sparks theological debates. Some see it as a past event involving the desecration of the Second Temple by Antiochus IV. Others believe it has a future fulfillment tied to the construction and desecration of the Third Temple in Jerusalem. The widespread belief is that the Third Temple will be built and then desecrated, triggering apocalyptic events before the Messiah's eventual arrival, awaiting the Messiah. The idea of the Third Temple and the events surrounding it, including the abomination of desolation, has sparked various attempts to facilitate its construction. For example, some Christian groups, like the Australian Christian You Wouldn't Want the Messiah's Return Right, have been involved. However, the timeline of the Third Temple's construction remains unknown due to unresolved tensions over the Temple Mount. The potential consequences of rash actions in reclaiming the Temple Mount are significant. It might lead to conflicts or even war, something nobody wants. 
Benjamin Netanyahu, the current Prime Minister of Israel, maintains the status quo to ensure peace. Despite the anticipation and attempts, the delicate situation requires careful consideration to avoid undesirable outcomes. So, what do you think of the third temple rebuilding update? Comment below and subscribe for more.